Good morning, everyone. First of all, I want to thank my colleagues, bureau directors, and other city leaders. We have a few of them gathered with me here today. Their leadership has been critical during these unprecedented times, and I couldn't have asked for a better team to help this city manage through this crisis. We're here today to share what the city of Portland has done, what we're doing, and what we will do going forward to save lives. As was mentioned, this is the first of two briefings this week. Later this week, we'll have a briefing related to housing and economic relief. As mayor, my first priority is the health, safety, and well-being of everyone in our community. And I'll do whatever it takes to contain this pandemic. My colleagues and I are laser focused on achieving this goal, as well as supporting both the resilience and the recovery of our community, both socially and economically. As our city, our first priority is to maintain the essential services that our public relies on to keep their lives on track. We took early action, declaring a state of emergency almost two weeks ago to ensure that our community stays safe and that it stays solvent. A week ago, City Council passed an ordinance putting a moratorium on evictions of those struggling to pay rent due to the financial hardships caused by COVID-19. Our water and our sewer operations suspended any disconnects, and I was very pleased to see that our private sector utilities followed suit, and I want to thank them for that. Our city's Economic Impact Task Force has also made terrific progress in developing immediate and near-term solutions and actions and relief to keep Portland businesses going. We continue to meet with banks, lenders, and other financial institutions who are willing to invest in offers of support for small businesses and others that drive our local economy. The city is also forging ahead on multiple fronts to ensure housing stability. And amongst those actions, we've repurposed $1 million in funds to support emergency assistance for households affected by the COVID-19 crisis. The Bureau of Development Services is prioritizing permits for Housing Bureau-sponsored affordable housing developments. This will keep the production of housing for low-income Portlanders on track even through the crisis. And commercial tenant rent in and on all city-owned properties, including food cart rental space, will be deferred for three months. In summary, we're responding to the COVID-19 as an employer, as a first responder via, via our police and fire bureaus, and as a provider of fundamental infrastructure that our community relies on, even in a time of crisis. What I've shared with you today is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we're doing as a city. Other city leaders are here today to fill you in on more of the actions we're taking as a city to ensure the continued exceptional livability we've all come to enjoy as Portlanders. Before I turn this over to the next speaker, I have a message for the people of this city. I want you to know, as mayor, that I know that everybody is being impacted, in many cases significantly, by this crisis. I want you to know that we're all making sacrifices together. Times seem very, very difficult right now, but I want you to know this. We will get through this crisis We'll come out on the other side, and I believe we'll come out a better community. We'll get through it, and we'll get through it together. Thank you, and I'll now turn this over to our police chief, Jamie Rush, right behind me. Good morning. Thank you all for coming out today. First, I want to thank our community. A couple of weeks ago, I asked you to report online talk to an officer by phone or in an open air environment when possible, and you have stepped up. Your flexibility and understanding have allowed us to limit our exposures while still providing the best police services. I also want to say thank you to every member of the Portland Police Bureau. You are navigating this very fluid situation and at the same time continue to come to work each day committed to protecting and serving our community. I want to assure you that we will continue our partnership with the city's public safety bureaus and the emergency operations center to manage our resource and the bureaus and the community's needs. As first responders, we have prepared ourselves to mobilize in uncertain times. 
As mentioned, we are taking all calls for service and are encouraging people to still report crimes online or in person, or excuse me, or by phone when possible. We are being very proactive in our approach. We continue with operational plans on how to best manage our resources during this quickly evolving time. We are asking our community members to comply with the governor's order to stay home and stay healthy. This is, a matter, this is meant to save lives, and I cannot stress how important this is. PPB will first attempt to educate any violators in accordance with the social distance guidelines. We will issue warnings if community members comply, but if necessary, we will issue criminal citations for noncompliance. We also understand that many of our homeless community may not be aware of the health, cri health crisis or the orders, which is why it is important for us to take an educate first approach. There are things community can continue to do to help. First, be aware of what the order allows and what it prohibits. It is imperative that people refrain from calling 911 and overloading the emergency system with non-emergency calls for service. The non-emergency dispatch line can be utilized to report those not complying with the governor's order. These calls will be triaged to determine if a police response is appropriate based on our resources and call volume at the time. I want to clarify some information about crime at this time. We are monitoring our calls for service very closely to help us understand where our resources are needed. In comparison, from March 12th to March 22nd, we learned that dispatch calls are 10% lower than they were the 10 days prior to the state of emergency. Calls involving suicide attempts or suicide threats with or without a weapon are up 41% from 2019 and up 23% from the 10 days prior to the state of emergency. This statistic is very concerning and there are resources available for those who are struggling. I ask everyone to reach out by phone, text, or video chat to connect with your family, friends, and neighbors. If they are struggling, make sure they know how to access, make sure they know how to access help, which is available through the Mental Health Crisis Intervention Line or Lines Through Life. We are continuing to partner with our Sunshine Division to provide food boxes for those who are unable to pick them up themselves. Requests for emergency food boxes have increased more than six times for the same period in 2019 and are up eight times from the 10 days prior to the state of emergency declaration. We have had a number of inquiries about whether domestic violence calls have increased and that data is not available at this time because of the variety of ways calls are coded. We are concerned about the safety of those who may be experiencing abuse and continue to provide information about resources such as the National Domestic Hotline or Call to Safety. I want to highlight that our officers are proactively checking businesses and watching to interdict crime. The vast majority of our community is working in cooperation to help mitigate the spread of the virus and obey laws and orders. There are some select individuals who will attempt to take opportunity to capitalize on the vulnerable, and we are working hard to educate the public and interdict their criminal enterprises. For example, over the weekend, officers with the Beaverton Police Department collaborated with our officers to recover stolen masks that were needed by medical staff and our first responders. We are concerned about possible scams and ask the public to be mindful that there are some people who may be trying to make a dollar selling equipment or items that are not what they are purported to be. Finally, I am aware of some businesses in the Pearl District that were vandalized over the weekend. This appears to be a singular instance and is not widespread. Our businesses and those employed by businesses are hurting right now. Please help us by reporting any suspicious activity and we will continue to proactively patrol these areas. We ask those business owner, owners to report crimes to us through online reporting if it is after the fact. We, continu we continue to work with all of our city, county, and state partners to ensure we are well coordinated and functioning as a team. I have a strong belief in our community. We are known for our care and our compassion in this city. And I am confident that if we continue to work together, we can ensure that our first responders are safe and healthy and available for urgent calls for service. This time of uncertainty is difficult. We can, however, tell you that as first responders,
Uh, we've never seen anything like this before, uh, just the magnitude of it. We opened our emergency coordination center uh, early March, primarily to, to coordinate responses with Multnomah County Public Health, Multnomah County Mo Office of Emergency Management, Oregon Health Authority, and the State Office of Emergency Management. And um, primarily to bring every resource we could possibly bring to bear on the situation. Whether that is uh, opening shelters to de-densify the all, uh, individuals that are already in temporary housing, if we're trying to organize child care with our private partners so that first responders, doctors, nurses, grocers have access to child care while they're essential employees and are coming to work to help serve us, making sure that we have supply chains for national grocers to make sure that they're able to fill the shelves of our stores around our communities. This has been a never-ending task for those partners uh, around the community. It takes an immense amount of teamwork. And present here today uh, is a group of uh, individuals that we work with closely, and I'm proud with them, but I'm also very proud of you as media. This is a communication crisis, and you've been on the front lines helping us communicate this message. And it's going to take teamwork for all of us to win this. So it's not just us here today talking about what we've done. It's every person in the city of Portland that we're counting on. We win if we work as a team. And frankly, we will fail if we don't. It is everybody in the city of Portland on the team today. So remember, stay home, save lives. I want to introduce to you the CAO of the city of Portland, Tom Reinhardt. Thank you. Good morning. Keeping the city running is more challenging and more important than ever. Over the past week, as the city has directed everybody who can possibly telework to do so, we have focused on providing the tools and training to make that possible. That means making sure staff have access to Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and other conference tools, as well as access to our network when they need it. Technology is allowing many workers across the city to provide key services, such as the city's development services team, which is continuing to process permits like the mayor mentioned. Our facilities team is working tirelessly to keep buildings open for essential staff, to perform enhanced cleanings when we learn of potential exposure to the virus, and to enforce partial or full closures of buildings. Our fleet team has stepped up cleaning protocols and adjusted our staffing to make sure first responders can safely continue to serve the public with city vehicles and equipment. In recognition of the burden this pandemic is placing on our entire community, the city has temporarily, temporarily taken a number of actions, many of which the mayor mentioned earlier. We have suspended pursuing collection on past due taxes, and we are also offering commercial tenants the opportunity to defer rent temporarily in addition to their loan payments for three months. We have deployed 23 hand washing stations and 15 portable toilets across the city. And through our parks and recreation team, we are providing houseless individuals with access to bathrooms at dozens of parks across the city as well. These actions are an essential part of supporting the houseless community who are especially vulnerable during this crisis. Here's what we want the public to know. Please be aware that many city services have shifted online, reduced their hours, or temporarily suspended non-essential functions. Our top priority is to keep our core vital services going, like my colleagues previously mentioned. We are doing this to shift resources to our absolute highest priority needs to protect the health and safety of all Portlanders. For the latest information on service changes, please visit portland.gov. We will be updating it hourly. I also want people to know that you are being served by a passionate, dedicated team of public servants who truly care about this community. Every day we see city staff coming up with new creative solutions, putting in extra hours and putting our community first. I want to take this moment to thank the thousands of city employees doing that work. Many people have asked what you can do to help us. 
All Portland residents can help. We are in this together and we're doing our best to serve you. Like Emergency Management Director Meyer said, please stay home. When you're out, please keep appropriate distance from one another. And, and as important as that, please stay connected to friends and loved ones. Please use the city website, portland.gov, as I mentioned earlier, to alert us to challenges with essential services and know that we will do our best to restore non-essential services as soon as we are able. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Transportation Director, Chris Warren. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, uh, Mayor Wheeler, for your leadership during this unprecedented time. I also want to um, um, express the uh, Commissioner Udaley, the Transportation Commissioner, wanted to be here today, uh, but she is at home uh, taking care of her son who uh, is very vulnerable to the coronavirus. So she just wanted me to relay to you that uh, if you're able to stay home with your loved ones, please do that because it's very important that we uh, as a community come together to support those that are the most vulnerable in our community. I also want to thank my fellow Bureau Directors uh, for their partnership as we coordinate these efforts and really bring Portlanders the service that they need in this really difficult time. As your Oregonian recently pointed out, the response to the coronavirus has in many ways been inspiring and has brought out the best in our community. I've really seen that in the dedicated employees at PBOT and we've really adapted our work for this moment of crisis to find creative ways to help our transportation system keep it running and to help Portlanders get where they need to go. At PBOT, we've dramatically changed our operations to protect the health of our workers while continuing to deliver the services that Portlanders need. We really need to make sure that Portlanders can access the critical things like food and medical care. That's why our field crews are focusing their efforts on, the transportation, on keeping the transportation system running and addressing the essential needs like sewer breaks or broken signals. In the last few days, our crews have cleared debris from the roads. They've responded to a dozen urgent sewer calls and they've addressed over 70 emergency traffic sign repairs. To protect our medical system, we've also limited ridership on the Portland Aerial Tram to only hospital employees and patients. And we've also reduced the occupancy to 10 people at a time so we can really preserve the social distancing. We've also reduced the frequency of the streetcar. This will allow us to provide that vital service while decreasing the number of employees that are working at any one time. And to, and to protect our employees, we've also instituted, as Tom said, a remote work policy for our critical PBOT staff so they can perform their work uh, remotely. If Portlanders see an urgent street repair issue that needs to be reported, please call 503-823 one seven zero zero this is our street maintenance hotline and it's staffed 24 hours a day i really also want to urge portlanders to travel with caution with schools closed there are more children out and about biking and walking have never been so important as people you know take the time to get out of their houses uh, in this situation you should assume that every street is a shared street watch out for your fellow portlanders Drive safely and slowly, especially in our neighborhoods. And finally, please follow the governor's order. Stay home, save lives. These days and weeks will really define us and for this generation and, 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 and beyond. I was born and raised in, in Oregon, and I know that this really is an unprecedented challenge. And as the mayor said, we really will get through this together. So um, stay safe out there and uh, know the Peabot's there to help. Thank you, directors and chiefs and mayor. Um, now we'll take a few questions. I'll start here with the media who are present. Uh, if you want to give me your name and affiliation and question, then I'll uh, repeat it for those participating by phone. Uh, who's first? Who do we have? We have OPB, it looks like. Is that? OK. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Alex with Mercury. Um, Alex with the Mercury. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay, so the question uh, from Alex at the Mercury was uh, for Chief Boone uh, with uh, Fire and Rescue. Uh, understanding that the Bureau has been preparing for this uh, s sorts of situations uh, w with materials and training, uh, what's the current status of uh, the materials and especially protective equipment that firefighters have available? Uh, Chief Boone. Thank you. So I just want to reiterate this is a public health crisis and uh, fire also uh, takes our lead from at the federal level the cdc the state level from the oregon health authority the county level from multnomah county health department for fire because we have to provide emergency medical services our firefighters can actually be vectors to spread the disease and so our emergency medical services director, Dr. Ju, has been working hand in hand with our EMS section to ensure our firefighters are adequately protected uh, based on the appropriate level of care. We also know that we have to have redundancy built into our system because we are faced potentially every day with a worst case scenario, not just a viral spread. Um, so we have redundancy in the system that we can increase uh, to a higher level of protection. Our firefighters are trained in that, uh, we've practiced in it, and they're ready. What the fire service is doing in order to preserve a short supply that on the treatment side of the 911 system, the nursing side, the healthcare side, and everybody else, we are moving to a higher level of protection that we can be self-sustainable and then we can give our disposable surplus to people that need it. We are also working uh, in a joint campaign with Multnomah County to use our fire facilities, our, our main distribution center, our logistics center, uh, and putting out a public message for plea for disposable uh, protection equipment. Portland Fire will always be there, will always be ready, and always there. So we will help in any capacity that we can, but we also, the public also has to be, remember that we are a critical infrastructure that we cannot fail to go down. We still have to provide services. That is on the emergency response side, and that is on the transport side. Uh, COVID is just one part of what our response responses are. We still have fire. We still have industrial accidents. You still have people going to work. You still have river accidents. All of these things we have to be prepared to respond to. So the medical side is just one part. Um, but we have the capacity to scale up and be self-sustainable. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions here in the uh, present? Uh, yes. Uh. Uh, my question is to the bureau directors of the first responders. Uh, what are you guys hearing from your workers out the field uh, dealing with uh, coronavirus related calls? Okay. Uh, so Everton Bailey with the Oregonian. The question was for uh, f directors with uh, first responders. Uh, what are you hearing from your staff in the field? What are they seeing? What are they experiencing when they're responding to, uh, to calls for service, right? Okay. Um, uh, Chief. Good morning again. Um, mainly what I'm hearing um, from the officers is um, their gratefulness for the flexibility that the community has provided as far as our unusual approach to calling you on the phone or asking you to step outside when there's a call for service. Um, and they're grateful for that, but they're also concerned. Um, they're concerned about unintentionally spreading this virus. They're concerned about coming into contact with this virus. So I think we've done a really good job um, as bureau directors trying to educate our employees as much as possible about what we're doing to try to prevent any of that from happening. Um, but for the most part, um, I think that they're feeling supported and I will continue to do everything I can to make sure that they know that from the top down, we are doing everything to provide for their safety and the communities. And I will say this again, this is a health threat. Uh, firefighters, police, first responders, all of us are human beings. We're under the same threat as everybody else. 
We care for our families. We care for our loved ones. We care for our parents and kids. But we have to show up. We have to come to work. We're essential employees. And we're so critical uh, to the services that get provided to citizens and communities across the state and across the nation. That's how essential first responders are. Not that we're putting ourselves at a higher priority, but we're also human beings. We don't uh, have the choice to telework. We don't have the choice to stay home. Um, and so when it comes to a viral spread, we're all susceptible to it. So we really are in this with everybody. We have the same fears. We have the same concerns. We have the same uncertainties. But we show up. We have to show up. So our priority as bureau directors is to ensure that our people are adequately protected so they can show up for you. Um, okay, another question from uh, here uh, first. Okay. Uh, question from OPB from Rebecca uh, for the uh, Chief Resch uh, about calls for suicide. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, so what I stated was that calls for suicide attempts or suicide threats with or without a weapon are up 41% from this time in 2019, and they are up 23% from the 10 days prior to the state of emergency. What we wanted to do by highlighting that is to point out that we do know that people are struggling and that we are trying to get out as many resources to folks as possible by encouraging you to come in contact with your friends and your family, whether it's by phone, text, video chat, but check in with each other know that there are resources available. They are available on our website. They are available on the county website. Um, your true health and welfare are our top priority. Okay. Is that the last question here? Okay. All right. I'm going um, I'm to go to the phone uh, first, and I'll come back. Uh, so first, let's go to our pool, uh, KGW. Uh, uh, is there a KGW reporter with a question on the phone? Uh, question from KGW, uh, will the arts tax deadline uh, be changed, uh, mayor or uh, administrative officer? Um, okay. We are following the lead from the state of Oregon on all um, uh, tax direction or waiting in terms of any deferral, but we're actively pursuing any ways to mitigate the impacts on both individuals and businesses, so stay tuned for more information on that. And just to clarify, that was uh, Tom Reinhart, Chief Administrative Officer. Um, okay, uh, next uh, from, let's go, uh, Channel 6, Coin. Uh, did you have a question on the phone? Okay, so the question from Channel 6 was uh, uh, for Chief Resch, uh, what's happening uh, to prevent uh, looting or other uh, criminal activity uh, around small businesses? So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we're actually, you know, we're asking everybody to watch out for the areas. Um, if you're out about and walking and you see something that's suspicious, please do call. Officers are responding to those calls for service. We also understand that there are large areas, business districts that are basically shut down, and we're asking all of our um, officers when they are on patrol to do extra patrols in all of those areas. Look for anything that's suspicious, but we're highly encouraging folks to call in suspicious activity so that the officers have the ability to respond. We are aware that there are large areas is that don't have a lot of people in them right now and that are vulnerable, are vulnerable and we are doing our best to um, uh, do extra patrol in those areas. Uh, thanks, Chief. Um, next I'll go to uh, the phone. Uh, K2, uh, Keaton, are you still on the phone? Do you have a question? Uh, 
Uh, so the question from Channel 2 was uh, help uh, for businesses uh, in Portland? Yes, thank you. And this is this is Ted Wheeler. The we have already impaneled an economic impact committee. It has three different groups. We have a total of over 100 people, big business owners and operators, small business owners and operators, representatives from the restaurant industry, from the arts community, the culture community, from virtually every aspect of this community. We've been putting together strategies around how to actually provide immediate relief to businesses. The focus right now has been on small business owners and operators. So far, we've deployed funds to the Jade District. That was one of the first business districts to be impacted sharply by the COVID crisis. We are expanding those opportunities across the city. We're working collaboratively with business partners, with philanthropic partners, with banks and other institutions to create a larger pool of uh, support for businesses. And we'll be talking more about that on Thursday. In addition, we're looking at all of our business operations from fees to taxes to the regulatory environment and working with our business owners and operators to talk about ways that we can support them and their employees throughout this crisis. So you'll be hearing much more uh, in the days ahead in terms of how we can specifically help businesses. But we're already deploying resources, as you heard uh, from the remarks Previously, uh, the city of Portland is in, uh, in and of itself a large commercial landlord. We also extend loans to various businesses throughout the community. We have provided an extension of the repayment on both leases as well as loans. Uh, but there will be much more to come. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, next, uh, on the phone, do we have a question from Fox 12 or anyone from Channel 12 online? Yes. Okay. This is Sarah Hurwitz with uh, KPTV. Um, and this message for this question really is just for anybody who wants to chime in because um, homelessness and uh, people living on the streets have touched on by several um, speakers um, today. Uh, my question is what kind of resources are um, available for folks who are living on the streets? And then, you know, also to talk about how positive. Uh, so a question from KPTV was about uh, uh, service to folks who are uh, homeless and houseless and then uh, potential uh, enforcement questions, right? Okay. So I'll, I'll take that. This is Ted Wheeler. I'll take it first, and then I'll turn it over to Mike Myers and others. But first of all, let's be clear. The governor's order applies to all Oregonians. So the social distancing, distancing requirements as well as the uh, exceptions in terms of travel if a person is homeless in this community, they still have the ability to go to Blanche House or seek additional services. Uh, moreover, we have people going out into the community. We have 14 different organizations working collaboratively, going to camps and encouraging social distancing. The CDC came out with guidance yesterday saying that we should not disrupt camps, if we have groups of people that are already camping together, they should stay together. We should not be breaking those camps up and encouraging people to spread out across the community. The city and the county jointly have opened significant new sheltering opportunities. Today would be a great day to take advantage of those. We have both the Charles Jordan Center now online as well as the Oregon Convention Center. We'll have the East Portland Community Center open by Thursday. In addition, we're extending the uh, time frame for our winter shelter capacity. And in terms of camp cleanup, we have suspended camp cleanup based on the CDC guidance, except in the case where a camp puts the campers or uh, the houseless individuals or others uh, in the direct line of danger. For example, if somebody sets up a tent in an area where they could be hit by a car, they will be asked to move. But otherwise, we're following the CDC guidance. And uh, with regard to enforcement, I'll turn it over to Mike and then Chief Rush. 
Good morning. Mike Myers, uh, Director of Portland Bureau of Emergency Management. And, uh, Mayor, thank you. I thought that was an excellent summary of some of the uh, uh, things we've been doing over the past few uh, weeks to uh, find opportunities to uh, uh, kind of add more social distancing to those that are temporarily housed. So we have a lot of vulnerable population out there that is currently housed. These individuals are isolated and marginalized, some of our elderly community as well. So I, I want to uh, give a shout out to uh, uh, nonprofits out there like Meals on Wheels, who you know, is, is still making meals, is still out there as volunteers working with them, delivering these meals, doing welfare checks. Uh, we really have seen a lot of volunteers come together to help us expand this operation. It is difficult in, in regular times. It is even more difficult now. So we also have the neighborhood emergency teams that are out there with hundreds of volunteers that are standing ready to serve. Uh, they're, op they're operating outside of our emergency operations center right now, assisting us in there, and they're ready to be out in the community, uh, finding out what needs are in the community and bringing that information back to the OC so we can generate a response. So I wanted to make sure that we had the opportunity to thank those volunteers as well. So thank you. As far as the enforcement efforts are concerned, um, enforcement in regards to criminal citations is going to be the last resort of the Portland Police Bureau. If there are communities that are in need of assistance, houseless populations, we will work with all of the resources um, available to try to make sure that we can find uh, places for folks that do allow for proper social distancing. Like I said, um, the enforcement piece is going to be an educate first approach so we know that everybody is fully aware of what the order allows and what it prohibits. Um, we'll use every resource available to us to make sure that we can provide uh, resources for the folks that we come into contact with. And again, stressing that uh, citations will only be issued as a last resort. Thank you. Next on the phone, um, did we have someone from KXL on the phone? Question from KXL um, for the mayor: uh, What would it take for the state of emergency to be lifted, and what would that look like for the state of emergency to be lifted in the city? Thank you. So the state of emergency is in two-week durations. It will come up for renewal on Wednesday. I will extend it. I'll be seeking my guidance from public health professionals, medical experts, and others. We're still in the upside of the contagion curve, so this would not be a good time for us to suspend the emergency declaration. We will eventually find ourselves at peak, and I've heard estimates of peak taking place sometime in Oregon between the first and the second week of April, that I will take my guidance from public health experts as to when that happens. And and then there will be some period of time beyond the peak that we will still maintain the state of emergency until we are sure that we're past the contagion. I will be relying heavily on public health officials and medical examiners to guide us as to when the best time is to lift the state of emergency. And when that state of emergency is lifted, it will be uh, made quite public to people and we will go back to business as usual, but we're not there yet, to be clear. Right now the order is stay at home, do not travel. We collectively control today ourselves how deep and how long this crisis lasts through our own behavior. My actions impact your health, your actions impact my health, so the order for right now is stay home, do not travel. Um, thanks for your patience and your time. Um, we're having some uh, safety concerns with the situation here with the weather uh, and, and folks being outdoors. And uh, so what we're going to do is uh, thank everyone for calling in and for monitoring the situation. 
online and elsewhere. And if media have follow-up questions, uh, please follow up with the appropriate public information officer for that bureau. Um, uh, this, uh, you know, the city, uh, all of our staff you know, are hard at work in adapting our operations, and we're here, and we'll be responsive. So thank you so much for participating, and we'll be in touch. Uh, media should follow up with public information officers uh, for follow-up questions. Thank you.